it's time on Shadow Peace. After Anastasius changed the physical appearance of all the Thriller Bark pirates and they slept for a night in their new bodies, one after another they set out for a casual day in the Holy Prodan's Kingdom. The first to wake up was Brook. Today he got to spend his day in the body of an elderly man. Perhaps what he could have been if he never left his home island. His day was mostly spent enjoying seeing how the next generation was practicing music, but he also gave them a performance that they would never forget for as long as they live and continue to pursue the path of music. Every other visitor on this island wakes up at roughly the same time eating breakfast together and splitting up in groups for the day. Even though Sanji would love to be together with the two ladies in their new bodies, he instantly got rejected and once again is going to be together with Absalom for the day. For Bronya, just sitting at a human-sized table is a completely new experience and she loves every second of it. For the first time since she met Verona, it feels like they are the same. It wasn't like she didn't think of Verona as her equal, but the difference between a giant woman and a human woman is something you can't just overlook. And because of that fact, Bronya decided to spend her free day in the most human way possible together with Verona. After finishing their food, they get dressed and leave the cathedral. On their way to the city, they start preparing for the day. Verona, I know this is the easy way out for me, but can you decide what we will do today? The shocked expression on Verona's new face fits her perfectly. It feels like her body is used to live in a constant state of anxiety and nervousness. She is still a girl with delicate stature, but her style is much different. Compared to extremely girly or sexy dresses, she is wearing a simple pink jogging suit and a skirt. Her most striking feature are her eyes, pools of shimmering hazel that reflected the depths of her emotions. They held a mixture of trepidation and longing, like a lost soul searching for solace in a world of uncertainty. Bronya is unsure how much of this expression is Verona herself, or if it is all the disguised body to hide her otherwise cheery attitude. Framing her face with a cascade of pink hair, flowing in gentle waves that enhanced her delicate features. It fell just past her shoulders, a curtain of warmth that shielded her body from the harsh gaze of the world. It feels only natural for these two bodies and the two personalities inside of them to spend their time together. With Bronya's plea, Perona thinks about what they could do. Normally going shopping would be her first idea. But buying clothes in a different body feels a bit useless. To be completely honest, just being together in a city with her best friend is enough to make this an amazing day already. But she doesn't want to disappoint the otherwise giant girl. Looking at her now, you could never imagine what the person from Elba usually looks like. Right now she looks like the ray of sunshine for Perona's gloom. Her presence can make anyone feel comfortable, a true feeling of warmth or radiance, wherever she goes. In the casual clothes she is wearing, she is the perfect depiction of a carefree spirit, her clothing a reflection of this body's lively personality. Her human appearance possesses a slender yet athletic frame, her stature exuding an aura of confidence and voice. Her movements are fluid and graceful, even though it's her first time moving limbs this small. It all feels natural to her. That must be part of Anastasia's devil fruit powers, is what Bronya believes. She may be unaware of it herself, but as they casually walk through the city, talk to each other and do window shopping, she unleashes an effortless charm, earning her many admirers in a very short amount of time. It really feels like she is drawing others into her orbit like moths to a flame. Is this what she would have been like if she was born a human? Well, nobody knows. While her attire can in no means be considered the most stylish choice, it speaks volumes about this body's eclectic taste and vibrant spirit. Adorned in a colorful ensemble of mismatched patterns and fall accessories, she embraced individuality with unabashed fervor. A splash of vibrant hues can be found all over her wardrobe, reflecting the kaleidoscope of emotions that resided within her own heart. With a mischievous twinkle in her eyes, Bronya's gaze sparkles with boundless curiosity and infectious energy for this singular day. She possesses an insatiable thirst for adventure, even in this human body, always seeking out new experiences and challenges with unwavering enthusiasm. Her laughter when she is spending time with Verona is like wind chimes in a gentle breeze, unlike in her giant body where it is more like wind chimes on a stormy day. But now in this form her laugh echoes pleasantly through the air, uplifting the spirits of those fortunate enough to bask in her presence. 
for normal people, this is a completely average day. They are not doing anything special, but for Bronya, a giant from Elba, who instantly became a wanted pirate when she left her home, this is a compilation of firsts. Looking at Perona, she thinks about how much fun they are having. If only she could always stay this size. Then they could be even better friends. Everything would be better if she just wasn't different. A tsunami of difficult emotions fills her brain, but her pink-haired friend is quick to pick up on it. We have been walking for quite a while now. How about some tea and sweets? Bronya can barely bring out an okay before getting pulled along by her friend. With the two personalities in these two bodies, it feels like they are in the wrong body. Maybe this is something Anastasius did to have a little bit of fun with the different disguises. Not every day needs to be a grand adventure filled with massive battles. Sometimes it is also just nice to be together with friends and family and relax. And relaxed they are, in a quiet little cafe nestled on a cobblestone street. The aroma of freshly brewed tea and warm pastries dances tantalizing through the air beckoning passerbys to step inside and indulge in a moment of blissful tranquility. A sunlight filters through lace curtains, casting a golden hue upon the cozy interior. A symphony of delicate porcelain teacups clinked softly against saucers, punctuating the air with a melodic cadence. Upon a polished wooden table, adorned with intricately embroidered linens, lays a captivating tableau of the lights. A porcelain teapot with a complicated floral motif gives off the fragrant aroma of freshly steeped jasmine tea. The reflection of the sun in the drink adds even more to the experience. Accompanying the tea are an assortment of delectable pastries, each a testament to the artistry and skill of the pastry chef. A tower of delicate macarons, their vibrant hues reminiscent of a painter's palette, beckoned with promises of sweet indulgence. Besides them, a platter of buttery scones, still warm from the oven, awaited. And next to that, a generous dollop of clotted cream and a single strawberry light. With each bite, the crisp exterior gave way to a tender, flaky interior. A godly combination of flavors dancing upon their taste buds. It doesn't take long for Bronya to notice something different when eating and drinking. Her stomach is much, much smaller. Perona, I think I need to use the toilet before we leave. Just wait for me here. The ghost princess nods as she continues to sip her tea, but in her mind she only has one anxious thought. Wait, we we don't have any money. She has to come up with a plan quickly, or she will make Bronya's first day out a horrible experience. However, her thought process gets interrupted when a pair of men approaches her. Hey cutie, do you and your friend want to have a good time? We know the perfect place for that. Perona already has experience with these kind of people, but she can't just use her negative hollows right now to stop them like she would normally do. Looking for an opportunity to get away, she just acts neutrally, but for Bronya, who doesn't know what is going on, this looks very bad. Two men ganging up on one young girl is a worrying situation, so her natural instinct is to step in. Hey, why don't you pick on somebody your own size? In her normal body, this would make sense. I mean, technically she would be much taller, but in this form she is just as tall as an average woman. So when one man puts his hand on her shoulder, she is taken by surprise. Both of the girls want to give the other a nice day, so even in her small body, she is ready to fight if it is for Perona. The situation seems like it is about to escalate, but then out of nowhere, a recognizable face appears. Nah, for real, you should stop. These ladies are important members of the church. If you don't want to be executed or anything like that, you should just leave this place now. Anastasius appeared. As per Maria's request, he shadowed the two girls. At first, he thought of it as just an overcautious request, but it all worked out in the end. This time, there was no need for a battle. But it's always better to be safe rather than sorry. Bronya apologized as soon as they left the cafe. For ruining their day out, she felt very sorry. If only she was a human, then they could have days like this every day and it wouldn't need to be something special. The pink-haired girl doesn't know how to react. She doesn't care about how tall Bronya is. All she wants to do is spend time together with her. And before she even can say anything, Anastasius chimes in. He is an expert when it comes to changing bodies. So when he actually is somebody talking about how the appearance isn't what matters, he knows that even more than anybody else in this world, just because of his devil fruit. And when he says that the inner values are what is important and not the outer shell, Ronya actually starts to cry. 
she was making this day all about her, all about being a human. Instead of just enjoying her time with Verona like she was supposed to do, it is all just a big misunderstanding. The two girls are best friends. They don't care about how they look, they only care about who they really are. And with this, they all have become a step closer. And with that, that's also the end of today's episode of Shadow Beast. I hope you enjoyed this tale and also understood that yes, well, the outer appearance might be what everybody sees at first, but what is truly important is what you have inside of you, your personality. And I think this is the perfect ending spot for today's episode. So all that's left to be said is stay happy, stay healthy, and most importantly, stay cultured. Pyro out. Bye!